I've used and reviewed plenty of all-in-one toothpick sized flight controllers and they're a great choice for two to three inch size quads because you've got everything on one very small and light PCB. But if you check out my build videos, you'll see I like to use things like this on larger five inch quads as well. There's a few of these to choose from these days with 40 amp ESCs, some with 50 amp like the iFlight Beast. But this FlyWoo H745 40 amp has been around for a while, but I've never been able to get hold of one because they always seem to be out of stock everywhere. I ordered this 1.2 version direct from FlyWoo, which only took about a week to be delivered, which is pretty impressive. Now, I got this board for a very, very specific build that I'll be covering in an upcoming video. This is one of the most integrated and powerful flight controller all-in-one boards on the market. So let's have a closer look. Hello and welcome to the Worldly Broke channel. This is YouTube. You know what to do. Now, before I go through the specs on this, bear in mind this is a very compact 25.5 by 25.5 millimeter all-in-one board and it weighs eight and a half grams. And that's an impressively small footprint and weight considering what's packed into this. It's got an STM32 F745 32-bit 260 megahertz MCU with one meg of flash memory. And that's an upgrade on this 1.2 version. And there's an MPU 6000 IMU on here. And that's a pretty high end spec for a toothpick size flight controller. You've also got a BMP 280 barometer on here. There's some onboard LED drivers and seven UARTs that are all available for you to use. And unusually, the USB port here doesn't use one of them. So they're all available for whatever you need. Oh, and it's got uh, an I2C connection on here for an external magnetometer if you need it. Now, this supports all the usual receiver serial protocols, SBUS, Crossfire, that means the LRS as well, but you can't use PPM or PWM. They're just not supported. Now this is aimed at multi-rotors, so I don't think that's really an issue. You also get eight mega black box log memory on here, and there's three BECs. There's a nine volt for your DJI Air Unit or Cadex Vista, five volts for a camera if you're using analog camera, VTX and whatever. And there's a 3.3 BEC on here for Bluetooth modules and so on. And Fly will do a very nice nano Bluetooth board for this. On the other side, we've got the ESC. It's a four in one ESC that supports BL Heli and BL Heli 32. In the factory, this is flashed with BL Heli 32. And it's got all the usual range of D-Shot, Multi-Shot and PWM protocols and delivers 40 amps continuous. And you can power this off anywhere between four and six S LiPos. So it's a pretty impressive spec, especially in such a light and small footprint. So let's just have a quick run around the connections on this. Now, some of these solder connections on this board are pretty small. I know they have increased some of the pads on here in this 1.2 version, but some of them are quite small. So you're gonna have to be a little bit deft with your soldering. So starting down here, we've got the main power input, plus and minus. Uh, these four pads here are for your LEDs and for your buzzer. We've got motor output one, if I could say, it, motor output output one, motor output two. Now, along the top here, there's actually two rows of pads. Uh, the ones on the inner side and the ones along the top here. So running along here, we have got UART three there. That's on this side, it's uh, let me just check TX and RX. Then we've got UART4, then we've got UART1. And next to that, we've got UART6. This last pair here, these are 4.5 volts and ground, which you can use to power whatever you like, receivers probably. And then that one up there is 3.3 volts, which you can use to power Bluetooth or something else. 
on the corner here, these two, one's just either side of the mounting post. These are your I2C connections, SCL and SDA, there. And then we've got, again, two rows of pins here, inboard and outboard. So running down the inboard ones, you've got UART5, you've got RX and TX there. And then you've got 4.5 volts and ground, and you could use that for powering VTX, whatever you like. And then the bottom two are the output and input for UART2, which is RX2, TX2. Pins down the outside here, we've got the camera input and 5 volts to power your camera. So that's together, which is nice. And you've also got ground next to that. So that's all you need to power your analog camera if that's what you're using. Uh, next to that, we've got the VTX output and we've got the 9 volts output, which you can use to power your CADX Vista and there's ground at the bottom. So it's quite nice. They're all together, but as I say, they are quite small pads. And here we've got the output for motor 4 and there we've got the output for motor 3 and you've got USB on the bottom there. And the orientation for this board is that way round. But if you're going to mount it in a quad that way, you're just going to have to tweak the gyro setting. No big problem at all. This 1.2 version has been redesigned with larger pads on the PCB connectors, as well as the one mega flash on the STM32. Now, even though they're larger, it's still going to be a bit tight down here. These edge connections are quite small. And in the box, you also get uh, some soft mount gummies. You get a pre-wired XT60, which is nice, and they supply a low ESR capacitor, noise suppression capacitor. This is 470 microfarads at 25 volts, which is fine for 4S. It's marginal for 6S. If I'm honest, I would replace this with a 470 microfarad or 1000 microfarad, 35 volt capacitor, just to be safe. Now, with all these features and ports on here, you can connect pretty much anything. Analog or digital VTX, including DJI, walk snail, HD0, whatever you need. And because this is a single PCB, there will be loads of room in even the smallest build to fit everything in. And this is one of the reasons I chose this for an upcoming build. It's a three inch cine whoop with compass, GPS, and a very specific set of LiDAR and optical flow sensors. And I've got all seven UARTs that I can use. And the second reason is the flight controller firmware. And as you'd expect, there's a beta flight target for this, but there's also an INAV target. And importantly, for what I need to try out, an ArduPilot target. Now, I haven't decided yet if this build will be using iNav or iDupilot for their excellent compass barometer and GPS support. But the choice really depends on how well they handle LiDAR and optical flow sensors on a small quad. And I've got a very specific sensor that I want to use. There's a downside to this controller, and that's the price. £125, or around $140. And yes, that is expensive, but it's still cheaper than the iFlight Beast at today's prices. And as we know, flight controller prices have nearly doubled in the last couple of years, so everything's expensive. And that's mainly down to the lack of availability of STM32 chips. And the other big question with an all-in-one board is reliability. If something goes pop on here, you have to replace the whole thing. But you've got to balance that up with the advantages of size, weight, and features. And I'll keep you posted on how well this performs in a later video. But this looks to be a very impressive all-in-one board, and I can't wait to get building. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found this helpful, why not subscribe or maybe buy me a coffee to support the channel? It'd be very much appreciated. And I'll see you next time.